Hi there. I had this video ready to publish, all ready to go, and I got some information that I thought was important you might want to know about. So I'm just editing a little bit to throw this in at the beginning, and we'll get to the video in a second. What I'm going to talk about is a Facebook group of turners called A Turn for the Good. I just found out about this yesterday and I'm honored to be invited to join. What they are going to do is in mid to early July, they're going to have an auction of turned objects from turners all over the world. And the proceeds from these auction pieces are going to go to some charities. I don't know what the charities are, to be honest I don't care as long as they're helping out someone. So if you have a like mind and would like to turn something, have it added to this charity, check out A Turn for the Good on the Facebook page. I'll put a link in the description box down below the video so you can take a look at it. I hope you'll get involved if it interests you. Hi there. I hope you're having as great a day as I am. Excuse me. Oh, I want to talk to you about three things today, and I better get at it because I don't want to spend so much time on it that I bore you. <laughs> Too late. First thing I want to talk to you about is stickers. I've had three guys send me stickers to put on my wall. First one was Yuval Leav, and I've had this around a while, not done anything with it yet, and now I'm going to do something. He's a turner from Italy. Unbelievably good Turner. He's got some, got some beautiful YouTube videos out there. You really should check him out. In fact, I'm going to put a link to a specific video that I really, really enjoyed. You'll want to see it if you haven't already done so. Thank you, you've all, for sending that. The second one is from Harold Bowern out of Ontario, Canada. Same country, but a long way from here. And he included his business card. Well, thank you very much, Harold. I'm going to put a link down below to his YouTube channel and also his website, in case you want to take a look there. And the third one is from Rob Summerlin, also out of Ontario. He has woodsleysummercraft.ca and he's the Canadian distributor for Hampshire Sheen and Yorkshire Grit. In case you're Canadian and want to try it out, he's the guy to contact. I ordered the Yorkshire Grit and the Hampshire Sheen. Haven't had a chance to try them yet, but I will and I'll let you know what I think of them. I'm sure they're going to be great. So. I'll also put a link to Rob's YouTube channel and his website. If you're Canadian, you'll want to check him out if you want those products. Now, about the stickers. I see all kinds of guys, turners out there, who've got stickers on their walls behind them and it really looks cool. But I don't have a spot on my wall where I can put them. And the reason for that is whoever built this place didn't just put up drywall, paint it, and it's ready to go. They actually put a texture on the wall, so these stickers won't stick to that very well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a virtual wall. I'm going to be able to put it up behind me here, and you'll be able to see all the stickers. And if you've got stickers and want to send them to me, I'd love to receive them. And there's two ways you can send them to me. Number one is the old-fashioned way, stick it in the mail and send it to me. When it gets here, I'm going to do like I did with these. I'm going to scan them do a high resolution scan and then I can use them on the virtual wall. If you don't want to go to the trouble of sending it that way and you've got a scanner, please feel free to do a scan of it and send that to me. Just please make it a high resolution scan. I want your sticker to look as good as it can. If you don't have a scanner, you could also take a photo as long as it's high quality and send that to me. Be happy to receive it. Now the second thing I want to talk about a little bit is the Edmonton Wood Turning Guild. I had the honor of having 31 of them come down yesterday and go through my shop. They actually went through my shop and that of Andrew Glazebrook. Andrew's a professional turner in this area, magnificent turner with an even more magnificent shop. So half of them came here, the other half went to Andrew's, and then after an hour or so they switched, the other guys came back up here. And I had a great time, I really enjoyed visiting with the guys and the ladies, wonderful time. They said they learned a few things, got a few ideas, and that's what we're all about. Woodworkers all seem to want to share ideas, so I had a great time doing that. And I told them, and I went to repeat it, if you want to stop by in Red Deer sometime, stop by the shop again, just give me a call. I'm here most of the time. I'd love to have you come back. All right, now, the third thing I want to do 
since I was having these people in, I actually cleaned up the shop. Now, I only did it maybe two or three years ago, so it wasn't that bad. Okay, it was bad. Luckily, my wife likes to do that kind of thing. She helped me out. It still took us two days to clean it up properly. And I thought, while it's cleaned up, maybe I should do a shop tour for you. I've seen a lot of other people do shop tours. I'm always interested in what they're doing because I get ideas that way too. Things I can build, things I can put in, jigs, all kinds of things. So I'm going to do that now. If you want to stick around, please do. And we'll take a shop tour. We'll start the tour in this corner. The door on the left is to the furnace room. The door on the right goes into the living area of the house. Now, if I pan up a little bit, you'll be able to see that I use every little bit of wall space I have available to me for one thing or another. Off to the right, I've got cabinets I built that are for storing all kinds of things. There are four banks of doors there. They all slide open. If I take two of them and slide them open, I can have enough space for anything more than half that size to come out of there. And I'm pretty sure you don't really want to see all the junk that I store in there. There's a lot of it. What I would like you to notice is what a nice large shop I could have if only my wife would park her car outside. This extra bay gives a lot of extra space and I keep a lot of my things on casters, on wheels or mobile bases as much as I can. Almost everything in my shop is able to be moved around, including my miter saw and my table saw. With my miter saw and table saw out of their usual places, you get a decent look at the wood storage area I have, a few of the roller stands that I built and a couple that I purchased, my band saw, my gluing press, my disc and belt sander, and coming around and looking up, you can see that I've got some lumber storage up top as well. That's very handy to have. There I have my drill press and my jointer, the dust collector, and this is what it looks like with the miter saw and the table saw back in their respective places. Also back where it belongs is my router table, which has my workbench on it. Now as we go around, I have a carousel that I built there a few years ago. It has a disc sander, a spindle sander, scroll saw, and covered under one of those pieces is my vacuum pump. On the shelves underneath those I can store all kinds of stuff. Right now I've got all my brad nails and a lot of other incidentals. On the wall there's a piece that I built to hold my saw blades. In here I've got couple of cabinets. The one on the left holds all my assorted screwdrivers. The one on the right has drawers that I keep my sandpaper in. Each drawer is devoted to a different grit, in this case 220. The ones that I cut into one inch strips are here and then beneath this 
I keep the full sheets so that they won't curl up and the ones that I have cut for my various sanding blocks. I have one drawer on the bottom. That's all my various sanding blocks. I like to have one for each grit, just a whole lot more convenient. And it's not something I went out and bought in one day. I collected those over quite a few years. Continuing around the room, I have both overhead cabinets and cabinets below the workbench. A fair number of the obligatory multi-drawer cabinets in the corner. Can't have too many of those. Also along there I have my wedgie sled. Here you can see both my drum sander and my planer. And if the backlighting would allow it, above you can see the torsion table I built that holds my CNC router. I have it suspended from the ceiling. I've got a chain on each corner to make sure it doesn't come down. In the center, you can see the end of the cable hoist I used to bring it down. So if I move the drum sander and the planer out of the way, I can bring that down. And then I use the sawhorses you can see on the lower right to hold it. I feel pretty lucky to have the shop that I have. There are guys with smaller shops who do just fine, and there are guys with a lot larger shops. This is the one I have. And as you can probably tell, I utilize every square inch of it that I possibly can, as efficiently as I can. Here's a little better look at the cabinets in the corner. And this is a board that I drilled for all of my Forstner bits. Very handy to have. I've got each one marked with pyrography, so I always make sure I get the right size. And over here is my infamous microwave, in case I decide I want to burn some more wood one day. I'm on the back side of my lathe now, and you can see my dust collector hose going into a dust port so I can do the sanding at the lathe and extract all the dust. There's the wall with a myriad of clamps. Radiant heater that's behind me when I'm turning helps a great deal in the winter in Alberta. There's my grinder, my Tormek, with the lathe moved out of the way I'm able to get a good enough view that I can show you underneath the Tormek and the grinder I have drawers with various tools of the trade. Back to the left is the rear door to the garage, the way to get outside. Because the lathe is also on wheels, I was able to move it back far enough to get a good look at the stand the Tormek and grinder are on, and now I can get a look at the lathe itself. The cabinet that I built also has a drawer in it for some of the tools I use.
and below the lathe, although it's quite a mess right now, there's a fair amount of storage space there. The black case on the bottom holds my pyrography kit. And the rest of it is just an assortment of different wood scraps and pieces I plan to use in the future. Above the lathe, I have a assembly I built to hold a couple of lights and a couple of different drops I have there for putting my camera when I'm recording video. And all of those things can be moved along that network any place that I need them to be. At the end of the bench that holds my Tormek and grinder, you can see my small compressor and the compressor hose above it. And now as we come around the corner, we're right back where we started. Well, without digging every tool out of every drawer, showing every nut and bolt in the place, that's a fairly concise look at my shop. I occasionally complain that it's too small, but I don't know a woodworker who doesn't. And I've seen some other shops a lot smaller where guys do great work, so I know I'm pretty lucky to have what I have here. So thank you for stopping in today. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Hope you'll come back next time. Click the like button if you like what I'm doing. Don't forget to subscribe. And please be safe and have a good time in your shop. Take care now.